Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar hosted by ZipRunner. This webinar is not just about the tools and features, it's about optimizing your testing process from start to finish. I'm actually glad to see so many people having joined us today. Uh, let's wait just for a few minutes more to make sure that everyone who wanted to be a part of today's webinar could join us. Uh, and while we're waiting, let me please introduce myself. I'm Alessia, Customer Success Manager at ZBrunner. And I'm excited to announce two speakers who could join us today. These are two real professionals in the sphere of testing. So please meet Hanna Glushakova, Senior QA Engineer, and Hanna Suhadova, Lead Test Automation Engineer. Hi, Hanna, and hi, Hanna, how are you feeling? Are you ready to make this webinar productive? Hi, Alessia, sure, we're ready. Yeah, hi, Alessia, we are very excited to be here today. Yeah. Awesome, so we're really waiting to, to listen to you soon. Um, and just a few moments that I wanted to highlight before we get started. So please, make, please keep in mind that this webinar is being uh, recorded. So this means that after the webinar, you all will get a recording, an email with the recording of this webinar. And please uh, feel free to, uh, to send your questions uh, to the chat uh, during the webinar uh, or during the Q&A session. So yes, I hope you all see this Q&A section uh, of your Zoom. So after the main part, our speakers will all answer your questions. And to make this webinar even more interactive, uh, at the end of this webinar, after the Q&A session, uh, you'll have a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. So please uh, stay tuned for more details at the end of the webinar. So without further delay, I'm giving the floor to our first speaker, Hanna Hushakova, Senior QA Engineer. So Hanna, please, the floor is all yours. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar. My name is Hanna. I'm Quality Assurance Engineer at Zebraner, and my colleague, Hanna. Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is also Hanna. I'm Test Automation Engineer. And uh, today we are going to demonstrate your testing, uh, Zebraner testing platform, a tool where you can design test cases, uh, execute automation tests, and analyze results all within a single environment. In the first part of today's webinar, I'll show you test case management module where QA engineers can manage testing documentation, plan testing phases, and keep track of test run results. Yeah, and uh, in the second part, I'll show you the benefits uh, real-time reporting of automated tests, how to integrate and connect your existing project, uh, also how to speed up uh, your test results analysis with AI failure risk classification. And uh, in the end, uh, there will be sign inside how to uh, ensure traceability between manual test cases, automation executions, and defects. So, Hanna, are you ready? Sure, let's get started. Um, let me quickly share my screen. So I hope you guys can see it. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, today, uh, we'll have uh, an overview of Zebraner testing platform. Uh, by the way, Zebraner is a multi-project system, so you can conduct testing activities on multiple projects at the same time. Uh, the concept of project is pretty straightforward and is similar to projects in Jira. So as you can see, I have multiple projects here. So um, for example, you can create one project per one product you're doing. And today we're going to emulate this scenario when we are establishing testing process from scratch. So I'm going to start with an empty project, which was created before our webinar. Um, and first of all, we, uh, we need to add some data here. So basically we have two options. Uh, if we are starting project from scratch, we can click on this noticeable button on the UI to create test suite, and then we'll be able to create test cases. Uh, but in my case, to speed the things up, I've already prepared a CSV file. 
Uh, so um, you can import CSV file from any test case management tool you're using. So for example, if you're storing your documentation in Google Sheets, you can download it in a CSV file and then upload it to uh, ZBrunner. So we are going to import data into the system. Uh, we can see that import is in progress um, and now uh, we can see that uh, 13 test suits and 49 test cases were successfully loaded to the system. Uh, now, when the import process is finished, we can see the tree of suits on the left side. So uh, we can expand uh, this tree like to see uh, the whole tree of suits. And you may notice that suits can be nested. Uh, let's select any case um, and open it for you to get the idea how the test case looks like. So when we open the case, uh, we can see several tabs here. Uh, the first one is general tab, so we can see the description, preconditions, post conditions, and steps to reproduce. Um, then we have properties tab. So here we can see who is the author of this particular case, when it was created, uh, the priority of test case, automation state, and so on. Uh, then we will be able to see attachments if there are any. And the last step stands for manual and automated uh, executions results. Uh, so um, it's not um, always convenient to look uh, through cases in this sidebar view. So we can switch to modal view to see like the whole picture. Uh, from here, we can switch between our test cases. Uh, we can also copy the link to this particular case. We can copy the key, which could be useful for automation. And also we can edit, clone, or delete our test case. So it often happens that we have steps that are repeated in lots of test cases. So to make life of manual key engineers a little bit easier, uh, we have such functionality, which is called shared steps. Uh, the concept here is that uh, when we have steps which are repeated in lots of cases, in order not to write those steps from scratch every time, you can simply add those shared steps to your cases. So as you can see, I've already created one. So let's go back to our test cases and add shared step here. So uh, we can see this um, obvious shared step button here. We can add our step and here it is. So we can drag and drop those, play, uh, those steps and save them. So here we can see our sh shared steps. Uh, let's imagine that uh, something has changed in your application. So for example, you had like user field uh, in your login page and now it is changed to like, for example, email field. So let's edit our shared step and uh, navigate back to our test case. So here we can see that our uh, test case was updated. So that's pretty convenient. Also, uh, in order to solve needs of different teams, we designed such functionality as custom fields. Uh, the idea is that you can add completely custom attribute to your test case. So for example, let's add one. Here we have also this noticeable button. And um, Hannah, how do you think what custom field could be added uh, to our test cases? Uh, well, so uh, it would be great to have, for example, device type custom field, uh, probably with several options like desktop, tablet, and uh, mobile. Yeah, let's select as multi-select. Uh, yeah, for example, tablet and mobile. And uh, let's make a uh, default value uh, desktop. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hannah. Let's save our custom field. We can see that it appeared uh, on the general tab, but here we can also switch our tabs. Uh, let's navigate back to test cases view and open create test case model. Here we can see our custom field. So with uh, the default option, uh, also if needed, you can add the additional options here. So 
that's how it works. Um, now, when we are done with our testing documentation, uh, let's imagine that uh, we have a team working on account area of the application and uh, we want to execute account management tests. So let's move to test runs section and create a test run. Uh, so let it be account regression. Here we can provide any description. Also, before our webinar, I've created several environments and milestones. So we can select, for example, staging environment. Um, so you can create um, like as many environments as you need, because we know that teams are working on like several environments, for example, QA, staging, production, and so on. So those could be added. Uh, also, we have a milestone here. So milestone is a concept of planning. So you can add the upcoming release version, for example. Here we add configurations to test. So we know that uh, our application could be tested on different browsers, versions, and operating systems. Uh, so we can provide like as many options as you need. Uh, and um, the last thing what we need to do is to create is to select our test cases uh, so once we are done with this we uh, are ready to create our test run um, so when we created a test run we see that test cases are unassigned and untested so let's select tests with a medium and low priority and leave uh, high priority tests for automation. Uh, so uh, those, all of those like cases uh, could be assigned to particular QA member. So let it be me. Now we can see that our cases are assigned. So uh, when QA engineer goes to this run, assigned to filter could be applied. So let's do it. Um, and engineer starts execution of those test cases. So uh, test case description and uh, steps to reproduce could be viewed uh, in sidebar view um, as well as on um, test cases view. Uh, so um, test cases could be executed one by one, uh, for example, like that. So you uh, select the result here, you can add any details, attachments, and so on and save your result, or uh, you can use the bulk mode. So for example, select a bunch of test cases and then set the result for all of those. Um, so let's select um, this whole suite and mark uh, those cases as failed. So what we can do here is like link, uh, we can link the issue. So from here model, we can create uh, from this link issue model, we can create a new issue uh, if we don't have such bug in our system. So we can create a new one or we can link uh, the existing one. So let's link like any random. Um, issue and uh, you can also provide the details here. Well, due to the linked issue. Um, and let's save it. So we can see that our bug is linked and also we can see uh, the additional information on the execution step. Uh, so when we are done with testing and identified some failures, uh, developers fixed those failures, those issues, uh, for sure we need to rerun the, those tests. Uh, so for that purpose, we have a rerun option here. So we can select like only failed cases, uh, copy assignees and create a rerun. So yeah, so uh, once again, we can set the results and continue our testing. So to sum up this part, uh, I showed you how to manage testing documentation within the project, how to use shared steps and custom fields, and how to work with the uh, test runs. Um, 
I think, uh, Hannah, I've done everything from manual testing part in this run. Uh, so let's start uh, running some automation regression tests. Sure. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, hello, everyone, again. So let me share my screen. Um, yeah, by the way, how was Hannah's demonstration? Please send your reaction. Yeah, it would be very gr great to see them. Yeah, I can see. Thank you. Cool. A lot of reactions. So, uh, yeah, as Hannah said, uh, she just presented you uh, test uh, case management mo module, and I'm going to show you one more automation reporting. Uh, by the way, it was to mention that uh, those models can be used independently from each other. Uh, so, for example, you could use only automation reporting uh, with some third party uh, test case management systems and vice versa. So to uh, enable real-time reporting, uh, uh, ZBrunner provides uh, agents for the most popular frameworks. Uh, on the screen right now, you could see uh, the list of uh, currently available integration uh, provided by ZBrunner, but uh, it doesn't matter what kind of tests uh, you have. So um, like reporting can be enabled for API, mobile and web tests as well. So I've chose uh, for today's demonstration uh, test G framework. And uh, uh, let's uh, uh, enable our integration with a help of onboarding guide. And uh, first step, this is basically obtaining a demo project. So uh, the Brunner GitHub official page uh, has a lot of repository with samples project. And um, the first uh, step is obtaining this sample project. So by the way, I've already obtained uh, this project just to save our today's time. And uh, the project is based on a Gradle build tool. And if I open a build Gradle file, uh, actually agent for the Brunner is already in place here. So it's added as a, as a dependency. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, our configuration and integration is already enabled. For that, uh, it's necessary to, to proceed to the second part. And uh, it's necessary to provide a valid configuration. Uh, let's take, take a look uh, in detail um, how it looks like. So uh, on the right side, you could see uh, a list of properties. The first property uh, enable reporting. So true means it's enabled. Uh, the second uh, property, it's project key. So let me open the list of the project. Uh, as Hannah said, uh, for today's webinar, we created uh, an empty webinar project uh, with project key web. Uh, that's why uh, on the property um, code snippet, we have web value here. Server whose name uh, is our workspace for today's uh, webinar. And the second uh, option uh, is access token uh, to perform API calls. Uh, it was to mention also that uh, the token is auto-generated and will be expired uh, in 30 minutes. But I would like to highlight that uh, it's, um, you can also obtain a permanent token by clicking on the top right side uh, profile, navigating to account and profile. Uh, and here, uh, just a second, you will see uh, API access step where you could obtain your permanent token. So let me uh, navigate back to the onboarding uh, guide. And the rest of the properties are, are optional. So on the left side, you could update them. For example, I can update some environment. And I am just ready to copy uh, this code snippet and put it into agent properties file as guide uh, set. So let me do that. Yeah. Uh, and let's proceed to the uh, third step. So since I have uh, web tests and uh, ZBrunner also um, offers a possibility to execute your tests uh, using inbuilt uh, ZBrunner Selenium Grid, uh, that's why for that I have to choose just platform. Uh, in my case, it, it can be Linux and I just choose a browser and its version. So let's, for example, use Chrome, uh, the previous version. And uh, I just need to copy this code snippet and put it uh, into base test uh, also as uh, this onboarding guide suggested. So uh, yeah, let's proceed to the next step. And uh, this is actually execution the test. Let me copy this comment and paste 
to terminal. Uh, yeah. And uh, actually, the test will be started uh, execution. So let me navigate back. So yeah, great. Uh, actually, we are done with configuration and integration. So as you can see, it was pretty easy. And uh, now I can just click to proceed to results. And we are navigating to the launches page. Uh, actually, it's uh, a main page for automation reporting module uh, because here we could see the list of all executions or all launches. By the way, launch it's like a suite uh, with uh, tests uh, that run at a particular time. S and yeah, as, can, as you can see, uh, the first uh, uh, test is already uh, started running. And uh, on the left side, on the right side, you could see BNC. Uh, actually, it's real time uh, view, uh, and uh, we could see like what currently happening happening in your tests. So we even could uh, help our tests or break something. Uh, on the left side, uh, you could see uh, log messages uh, and uh, some screenshots that were taken uh, in the middle of our tests. Yeah, uh, also when a uh, test um, is finished, for example, let me open uh, one more time the first te te uh, test, uh, VNC uh, is changed and transformed to video recording. So you could play, expand, and just watch what was happening uh, in your test. Uh, so let me navigate back to the launches page. Uh, also on this view, uh, you could see uh, some useful information like uh, number of pass, failed, and skip tests, and uh, the rest of like useful information here. Uh, let me open one more time uh, this um, specific uh, launch. But by the way, I would like to execute one more time uh, this test because I will show you one more feature just in a moment. Yeah, but for now, uh, let's take a look uh, into this result. So as you can see here, there is one pass te uh, test, one skipped, and for example, two failed. Uh, as you probably know, uh, failed uh, tests, like tests uh, could fail uh, due to di different reasons. So uh, it could be like product issue in your application, or test could fail, for example, due to some stability issue in your auto tests, or it could fail uh, due to some environment problems uh, also known as infrastructure. Uh, so for that, um, uh, ZBrunner provides a model view uh, on the right side to classify the reason of uh, this specific failed test. So you could specify if this uh, test failed due to a business issue, locator issue, because some selector was changed, infra or un just un uncategorized label. Those labels are predefined. Yeah, but uh, probably you may notice that uh, some labels are already uh, set here. And uh, I will explain why it's happened. Actually, it was done by artificial intelligence machine learning feature provided by ZBrunner and uh, how it works under the hood. Uh, so this feature uh, tried to guess a reason of failed tests uh, just uh, based on uh, stuck trace of this test. Uh, if you have, uh, for example, a clear work workspace, uh, most likely you will see uncategorized label here. But uh, when your workspace collects uh, more and more executions and uh, very important, uh, you analyze and classify those failures. Yeah, uh, It means that you train the runner to be more accurate and uh, confident uh, in future failures um, and in future failures analysis. That's why, uh, as a result, uh, it could potentially like speed up your uh, results analysis if you um, accurately uh, classify uh, your failed tests. So, uh, yeah, I mentioned that I will um, show you one more feature. Uh, so if I navigate to the specific test, actually on the top, you could see uh, the breadcrumbs this is history of this specific test. So since I ran two times, uh, we could see here two executions. Uh, by the way, uh, we could see here uh, last 10 executions if you run uh, this test multiple times. And uh, this feature is very useful, for example, for detection some flaky tests or even intermittent bugs. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let me navigate back and uh, um, 
as I mentioned, I executed my tests on my local machine, but uh, there is a feature to execute uh, the tests uh, with the help of uh, launcher tool. So what is launcher? Actually, there is a button on this page, uh, but uh, yeah, let me uh, explain what it, what it is. So launcher, it's a user-friendly interface uh, that allowed to perform a parameterized execution from connected test repository. So uh, when I uh, click on this button, uh, the first step that we need to do uh, is to add a repository where my tests are located. As I mentioned, uh, there is like samples project. So let me copy this URL of this project, uh, just paste. Uh, necessary to put username, um, yeah, and uh, token for this repository. Um, so uh, repository is connected just um, with one step, and now I am ready to create a, a new launcher. So, so launcher, this is basically configuration uh, for this specific um, execution. So let me create uh, this launcher necessary to define a name, I select branch where test is located. Yeah, and uh, also we have to specify execution environment. So uh, the test is going to be executed inside Docker container. That's why uh, it's necessary to select a Docker image. Since my sample project uh, based on a Gradle build tool and uh, based on Java, uh, that's why I could select uh, this Docker image. And as you can see here, uh, launch command is already pre-populated. Uh, but since my uh, demo project uh, includes several subfolders, that's why I need to adjust this command a bit. So for example, first of all, I have to navigate to specific subfolder and uh, execute uh, the test using Gradle clean test command. The rest, uh, what should I do? Uh, just specify operation system and browser that I would like to execute my tests. So let it be Firefox latest version um, for this launcher. And uh, I want to get a notification when my um, launch has finished. That's why I could put uh, an email here. And when this launch is finished, I will receive a notification. So yeah, uh, launcher has been just added and I can just click on the launch button to execute my tests. So the same situation, pretty easy. But uh, let me navigate back to the launchers because uh, I just did it manually, but there is one more option. I could save uh, this launcher as a preset yeah, and enable schedule for this preset. For example, uh, using cron format, I could specify that I would like uh, to execute my test uh, automatically at six o'clock uh, each working day. So yeah, uh, scheduling is enabled, so my test will be executed tomorrow. Yeah. Let me navigate back to the launchers. Uh, and actually I would like to uh, explain several more things regarding failed tests. Uh, because, yeah, as I said, uh, tests could fail uh, due to some product issue. And uh, if we have a defect, for example, in some bug tracking system like Jira, uh, we could link uh, this specific fail test with Jira ticket. So we could also find Jira ticket here, or as Hanna uh, presented for test runs, we could create a new issue di directly from this view. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, pretty easy. And uh, let me explain you one more thing, uh, because uh, yeah, as uh, Hanna mentioned, uh, we are going to uh, execute our regression uh, automation, yeah, and uh, push results to test run that Hanna just created. So let me navigate uh, first of all to the test repository. And uh, I would like to highlight that each test case has a key um, that located on the uh, right side. This is basically key of uh, this specific test case. So the first uh, step to achieve traceability uh, on your project, 
uh, we have to link uh, those test cases, manual test cases with our automated tests. For that, uh, let me open uh, automated tests. And uh, we could just specify using test case key annotation, the list of manual test cases using their keys. And actually we are done with the first step because when I navigated to the launches and open specific um, tests, you could see here, uh, here uh, the labels of these test cases. If I click on test, uh, test case, uh, you could see a preview of like this with steps, expected results, and some other information. So yeah, we are done with the first step. And uh, as Hanna uh, created a test run and asked me to execute some regression tests, basically uh, let me filter by uh, high priority because yeah, on our uh, webinars project, uh, all our high uh, test cases already automated. And as you can see here, uh, results are already pushed to this specific test run. So you could see here my name uh, because I run uh, and execute my tests like from my account with their statuses. So if I, for example, click on specific test case and its result, uh, we could see here uh, the, list, the list of executions. So the last was executed eight minutes. Uh, a goal by me, and if I click on it, uh, you could see uh, this automated test uh, with their results. So yeah, uh, let me navigate back to the specific test run. So actually, we are done with uh, with like all testing phases uh, from creation test cases uh, till like execution and analysis, and uh, for this specific milestone. Uh, Spring uh, 42. Uh, actually, I'm ready to close uh, this test run. Yeah, because we are finally done with that. And uh, once a new sprint uh, begins or milestone, uh, we can start a new testing phase uh, from scratch. So um, uh, that's basically done. Uh, I've done what I uh, wanted to show you today. Uh, so let's sum up. Uh, the Brunner testing platform, this is basically a unified uh, test management and automation reporting uh, tool where you could uh, design your uh, test cases, also plan uh, some milestones, uh, a scope of testing, also execute automated tests and perform manual test run, and uh, as a final result, also analyze and report uh, your results. Yeah, uh, all uh, can be done uh, within a single environment. Yeah, that definitely improves communication and collaboration between uh, manual and automated teams and other stakeholders, and also uh, provide a clear overview of testing um, progress in general. That um, helps to increase transparency of like project uh, and its health in general. So yeah, everyone, thank you. Actually, we are done. Thanks for your time. Uh, if you have any questions about the Brunner, please write them on the Q&A section. Yeah, thank you, Hannah, and thank you, Hannah. That was indeed an insightful presentation from your side. Yeah, I hope everyone found it useful. So yeah, uh, we actually have quite a lot of time for your questions. Uh, so if you have any, uh, please write them in the Q&A session, section. Uh, and uh, yeah, we actually have several questions uh, already asked. Um, so we can start with them and you can add your ones. Um, so we had a question about the duck, tea, the duck theme available for users. So yeah, indeed we are planning to add uh, this one uh, till the end of the year. So yeah, stay tuned for the updates. Uh, and uh, yeah, there was also a question about an AI-based plugin for converting the manual test cases into automated ones. Uh, yeah, so indeed we have something uh, like that in our plans. Uh, yeah, so hope we'll be able to uh, implement your ideas as well. Uh, and yeah, we have some questions that haven't been an answered. Uh, so Denise uh, asked um, as the, about the format of the CSV file 
uh, that should be imported uh, to test case management. Um, so maybe Hanna Shakova could answer this question. Yeah, sure. Um, Denise, uh, thank you for your question. You're absolutely right. Uh, we have a special documentation for a CSV import, so I'll send you the link to our chat right now so you can take a look. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, yeah, uh, let's first find this link, let's copy it and uh, we can even uh, send it to you after after this webinar um and uh, one more question from karina uh so what test case creation and run features that you acquired from other test case management systems uh so i guess i know this question is also for you mm -hmm. Uh, some of those features uh, that set us apart from other test case management tools um, are like shared steps sequences I've demonstrated today, um, test case variables. Uh, those variables can have different values in different environments. Unfortunately, I haven't shown them today, but we have such, uh, such a feature. Uh, also, we can use drag and drop in our test repository, so uh, we can rearrange, uh, move our test cases uh, in the repository. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, layout customization, which allows you to, um, which allows you to case attribute according to your needs. Uh, also, in addition to that, uh, ZBrunner testing platform offers a full-blown automation reporting module, uh, which allows you to work with the results coming from multiple testing frameworks uh, via a unibyte interface. So also, as uh, Hannah mentioned, there, um, there is also a possibility to uh, launch tests uh, from ZBrunner UI directly. So it was launcher functionality. Great, thank you. I hope uh, that answered the question from Karina. Yeah, but if you have any other questions, please write them uh, as well. Um, and uh, one more question. Uh, I guess we have two questions from Ariel. Uh, hi, Ariel. Uh, so, um, Ariel asks if he can see the same run, uh, the same executions of the same run of manual and automated tests, um, so that the QA analyst has visibility of the automated tests that have already been executed. Uh, so I guess that uh, Hannes Suhadol already showed that. Uh, uh, yes, and the, as I can see, yeah, Ariel, uh, yeah, wrote that uh, this was already answered. It, yeah. Uh, because, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I've already presented it. Uh, so, yeah, there is a tab with executions and uh, we could see uh, like all executions of this specific test run, uh, whether it was like manually on or, or just or using automated tests. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also another question from Ariel. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Ariel says that uh, when he runs uh, Autotest as a runner, it raises an instance of solenoid or a selenium grid. Uh, so is it a cost? does it cost any fees? Uh, does it entail any extra costs? So, um, yeah, probably I can answer. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, launcher, this is basically a don uh, of automation reporting module. Uh, and uh, when you execute your tests, uh, yeah, uh, it costs, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 25 cents. Uh, am I right, Alessa, saying that? Uh, just for time execution, like using launcher. So if you are not executed uh, your tests using launcher, but uh, with the help of other uh, surface tools, uh, like you won't pay like anything. Yeah, so we actually have a system of credits uh, and uh, the 
amount of credits that you spend depends on the instance set that you've selected. So uh, you can actually find more information about it on our website uh, on the Selenium Grid page. Uh, I will also attach this link to to the chat uh, to your question. Yeah. So um, yeah. So hope that helps. Um, and uh, also we have a question from Emma. Uh, she is interested in using automation reporting, uh, but still wants to use uh, their configured CI/CD pipelines in Jenkins. Will it work? Or reporting works only with launcher that you presented? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, probably I can answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you for your question. So yeah, as I mentioned, um, you could still uh, execute your tests using uh, your CI CD, configure it, yeah. Uh, so uh, for example, you could use only automation reports and, uh, and like real time reporting of your tests and still execute your test, uh, whatever you uh, like. like. Uh, just I would like to mention uh, one more time that, uh, yeah, launcher is uh, basically like a don. But for example, uh, if your team will confuse to see this button, uh, probably even for your workspace, we could disable it. And if you prefer just to execute your tests uh, using your uh, like configured CI CD. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and another question from uh, Constantine. Um, so uh, Constantine says that, let's say I want to migrate test cases from any other test case management tool, for example, to Strail. Is it possible to use CSV file exported from another test management portal? Or will I have to rearrange CSV file data in the exported file before importing to ZipRunner? Yeah, I guess this is kind of a question to Hanna as well. Hanna Ushakova. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's possible to use um, like your CSV file, which was exported um, into from any other test case management tool. Uh, but for example, if you're using test rail, we have like the direct option of import from test rail and also cases from test rail could be imported via API. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I hope that helped. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, we have a question from Philip. Uh, for manual tests, uh, do you support exploratory testing sessions? Also, a question, I guess, to Hanna Ushakova. Sorry, I don't really get the question. Uh, probably it when, um, like, QA team execute uh, the tests, uh, like, uh, not according to test cases, but uh, just exploratory. Uh, Probably, uh, um, I would say no, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Hannah, because yeah, like we are usually uh, following um, uh, general uh, testing process when team has test cases, uh, some milestones and test run. Yeah, and uh, if we want to see like a progress and um, uh, visibility of this specific coverage, uh, that's why, yeah, uh, we just follow this approach, like using just test cases, written test cases and test runs. Because yeah, exploratory testing can be just uh, anything from my heart. And uh, yeah, it's um, a bit diff um, like difficult to um, to, how to say, um to collect all necessary information about that thank you hopefully i answer it on your question yeah i hope so too thank you Hannah. um yeah another question so 
uh, can ZBrunner integrate only with web application tests, or it also can be working with backend tests like Unit, uh, Cucumber, Karate? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, also uh, it uh, like doesn't matter what what kind of test uh, you have. Uh, so uh, you could integrate uh, with ZBrunner for your web, mobile, or API tests. Yeah, uh, just uh, like um, uh, as I mentioned, also there is uh, a currently available integrations list of integration provided by ZBrunner. Uh, so if I remember correctly, um, uh, there is no um, any agent for now for Cucumber, but if you're just interested, uh, yeah, please let us know uh, because, uh, yeah. Yeah, great, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, and uh, another question from Ariel. Uh, he asks if he can run the test from GitHub Actions and see the results in ZBrunner. Uh, yes, definitely. So uh, you could use only uh, real-time reporting just to add like dependency of uh, agent and uh, make a, config uh, a configuration and execute your tests uh, from GitHub Actions GitLab pipelines or any other CI CD tools. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, and also we have a question from Martin. Uh, I guess I can answer this question. Uh, so do you have a trial demo to play around and test with features? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, please visit our website, zbrunner.com. Uh, where you can create a trial uh, workspace for 14 days. So it has all the features that uh, were actually presented today. Uh, so if you create a workspace for testing platform, you'll get both modules. So uh, both manual and automated one. Uh, yeah, so the trial uh, is 14 days. So I think that's quite enough to, to test uh, the features to some extent. So yeah, please, I'm waiting for you. I uh, hope that answered uh, your question. And also a similar question, um, does Ibrunner have a free version for a limited size project? Uh, yeah, so we actually have a free version of uh, test case management uh, for five uh, users max. So yeah, it's free. It, it's a bit, it has a bit limited features uh, than professional plan, but still uh, the core ones that you might need for your testing. Uh, yeah, so also please visit our website to create a free version of test case management. Um, and uh, another question, I guess the last one for, for now, um, is there any import capability available from other test case management tools like Test Trail? Yeah, I guess we already uh, mentioned uh, about this, but maybe Hannah could yeah uh, say one more time. Uh, yeah, sure. As I mentioned before, we have uh, an opportunity to import test cases from Test Trail directly, or we can use API for those purposes. Also, we can import CSV file from any test case management tool and upload it to ZBrunner. Yeah, great. Thank you for your answer. Thank you all for your questions. I don't see any unanswered questions uh, for now. Uh, I see Igor raise his hand. Um, okay, so just two seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I don't see an opportunity to to allow uh, good to talk. Uh, so please write your question to the chat if you have any questions to the QD session or uh, to the chat. Yes, thank you. Um, so as I said, I don't see any unanswered, unanswered questions, but if you have any, uh, please feel free to reach out to ZBrunner team 
we're always open to talk to you and answer all of your questions. So please feel free to visit our website. Uh, we have uh, the possibility to create a free trial there for 14 days for all of our tools. And uh, also please feel free to contact us via email and uh, join us in social media. So please you can scan this QR code that leads to our LinkedIn page. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we also have a question from uh, a fan. So do you guys have any more sessions planned in the near future? Uh, so yeah, they're not uh, in our, uh, they're not announced yet, but we will definitely uh, try to come up with some new webinars for you guys. So uh, we're really glad to, to be with you. And uh, yeah, so stay stay with us, follow us on social media again, yeah, to stay updated on all of the events that happen. Um, and uh, actually, uh, I think uh, one more, one last thing I would say is left for today. Uh, so Anna has uh, some kind of surprise for you that we mentioned at the beginning. So Hannah, please. Uh, yes, uh, so as Alesa, Alesa promised in the beginning of our today's webinar, uh, there is an opportunity to win a $50 Amazon card for the participants of the webinar. So within a few minutes, you will uh, receive an email with a really short survey uh, where we would like to know uh, what you liked a lot and uh, what we can improve in future. So, yeah, among uh, those who will fill out uh, those survey, uh, we will draw this Amazon card. So, good luck to everyone. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. That's indeed a nice opportunity. So, I hope you won't miss this email. So, uh, I think uh, if no questions left, um, at least I don't see any in the section for Q&A, uh, then we can finish our webinar for today. So thank you all for joining. I hope you found this uh, useful, I found uh, a lot of useful information and now you know how to bring manual and automated activities in one place, in one platform and thus improve your testing. So please, uh, yeah, thank you for, for joining us and yeah, I hope to see you soon uh, during our other events following ones so thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone